What is up, Mathletes? Welcome back to the episode of Math with Dr. Math. And in this mini lesson, we're going to be looking at how to factor these trinomials using the clown method. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. All right, folks, so here is the clown method. All right, um, again, it's, it's not really its own method. Um, it's more like the trial and error method, uh, but the reason people call it the clown method is because the way we're gonna set it up, when you kind of take a step back, kind of looks like a clown. All right, so here it is. All right, here's what's going on. First of all, you always make sure that there's no GCF, right? You can't factor out a greatest common factor. All right, so in this case, there's nothing uh, that these guys have in common. So what we do is we're looking for two numbers here. So let me do these two, right? These two factors have to multiply to give you 2x squared, right? So say we have 2x and x, right? Because 2x times x gives me that 2x squared. Or I could put the x times 2x. The order doesn't matter. We'll talk about the order a little bit later, right? Because we're not certain that this is going to work. And then um, we have these two factors, right, are gonna multiply to give me the negative three. And I'm just gonna, just to show you, I'll put a three here and I'll put a one here. And again, what I always do is I put the signs in at the end, all right? So make sure you're aware of that. And what we're gonna do to check, right, the check is always the fastest. So we go ahead and multiply the inner. So we multiply these two and then we're gonna take that, that'll be a 3x, and then we're gonna multiply the outer, which is gonna give me a 2x. And as I start to form this, it kind of starts to look like a little evil clown, right? So this is why it's called the clown method. And then I put the number that's supposed to equal, like when I add up those two terms, it has to equal this negative 5x, all right? So this is the setup. Let's actually dive in here, but you could see how it starts to look, resemble a clown. Some of you guys are like, you're the clown. <laughs> All right. So let's let's take a look at what's going on. So these two, right, are going to multiply to give me the 2x squared. So make sure that's clear. And it always is true. These two are going to multiply to give me the 3, the negative 3. And we want whatever we get here, we want those two products to, when you add them to give you the negative 5. All right. So let's go ahead and add these. So I got 3 times x. That's going to give me 3x. And then I got the 2x and the 1, which is going to give me a 2x. Oops, let's use a pencil here. 2x. And the big question is, is it going to give me a negative 5x? So now we throw in the signs. Are there signs that we could place here and here that will give me the signs I need so that these two add up to a negative 5x? That's the big question. Well, to get negative 5x, both of these... Right, both of these here would have to be negative for me to get that um, negative 5x there. And what we could see is if both of these are negative, that means that this sign and this side would be negative. But check this out negative 3 times negative 1, that does not, right? That does not give me this negative 3. That would give me a positive 3 right so what we know is these signs have to be different and if these signs are different right if that's going to mean that these two signs are different here and there's no way it could get a negative five there all right so right away this method i know it seems a little long because i'm explaining it but this method is going to take seconds literally seconds to check all right so let me go through it let me erase this and let me go through it to show you how fast it actually is all right so what's awesome is I know that these don't work. So let me change the one and the three. That easy. All right, so let me go through this. Let me erase my signs. And I'm gonna change the one and the three. So let me erase this. Let me erase this. All right, and let's get, well, we know that's gonna be the negative 5x. All right, so let's put the one here and let's put the three here. So one times x gives me one x. Two x times three x gives me six x. And again, I want a negative 5x. So if this is gonna be negative 5x, I know that that six has to be negative. For that six to be negative, I know that three right there has to be negative. And for that one right here to be positive, I know that this one has to be a positive. And that makes sense. 
because positive one times negative three, right? When I multiply them, that gives me the negative three. So again, you're gonna be trying a whole bunch of factors and then this is gonna be the fast way that you could check. And a lot of you guys are gonna be able to check this in your head, right? And again, the more that you do these, man, this you're just gonna get faster and faster at this. All right, so let's take a look at another problem and let's move a little faster, follow me. All right, so here we go, let's set up the scene. First thing, make sure there's no GCF. Let me set this up just to show you how fast it is. So we know these two have to multiply to give me 2n. So 2n times n. And these two have to multiply to give me 14, right? And I would put, say, 7 here and 2 here. And so let me actually, so if I put 7 here and 2 here, let's write that out. 7 here and 2 here. Well, remember, I multiply the middle, I get 7n. I multiply the outer, I get 4n. And now I ask myself, what's going to give me, what signs do I put on here to give me a negative 3n? Well, that would mean that 7 would have to be a negative. And so that 7 would be a negative, and that 2 over here would be a positive. And let's see if that makes sense. Negative 7 times positive 2, yeah, that gives me the negative 14. And there you have it, right? Now that's your check. And it's really fast because, again, these two, when you combine them, that gives me the negative uh, 3n that I wanted, right? So it's really fast uh, once you get the hang of this. All right, let's do another one, just again, to show you how fast this is. And again, this is me explaining it uh, on the fly. So imagine uh, if I wasn't explaining it, I would just go through and pump these out. But again, um, whenever someone's explaining something, it seems like it takes a little bit longer, right? So let's go through this in real time here. So what times what that gives me 5n squared? Well, 5n times n. What times what gives me the seven? Well, uh, seven and one. And then a lot of you guys are gonna start to see, well, why didn't I put the, the one right here? Because I already know from experience that I'm gonna have to check these two. And if I were to put the seven here, right, we gotta multiply these. And if I put the seven over here, that's gonna give me 35 and there's no way I'm gonna get a two if that 35 is there. Does that make sense? So again, you start to see these patterns come up, right? At first, you're kind of getting used to everything. You're a little bit shaky, but the more you do this, the more patterns you get to see. So here we get the 7n, and then over here we get the 5n, so 5n. And again, what we want is we want to see, is it possible, right? Is it possible for us to get a 2n from those two? And it would be if this 5n were negative, right? So if that were to give me a negative one and a positive seven. So if I were to do that, look at this, seven times negative one, that does not give me a positive seven. So I know that this is not a solution because again, these two do not, right? Because I need this five to be negative in order for me to have a two n, right? So again, and even if I switch the seven and the one, right, my numbers are gonna be way too big. So in this case, when you can't factor something, because not everything is factorable, we say this is prime. It's not factorable, right? You cannot factor it. So again, not everything is factorable. And what's awesome is this method, it allows us to check that really fast. All right, let's do another one. Actually, I'm being told by my producers, let's have you try some, all right? Because I could do a thousand of these. So what we want you to do, mathletes, is comment down below using this clown method, what did you get for A and B? Let us know, all right? So if this is brand new to you, let us know. Have you guys seen this before? If not, you know, tell us what you think. Share this video with some friends and maybe this might help them because again, we know there's a grouping method out there. We know there's an AC method, which is similar. Uh, we know that there's a trial and error method. There's so many ways of factoring. Again, a lot of you guys are gonna have your own methods that you really like. What's your method, right? Let us know. All right, Matthew, so hopefully this was interesting, new, um, and you got some value from this. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in that next video. Peace.